Welcome and thank you for joining us today. This session is being recorded and will be published on the UCL postgraduate page. This is the open day for MSC Real Estate Economics and Investment Analysis at the Butler School of Sustainable Construction. My name is Dorcas and I have here with me Dr. Nika Dem, who is the program director. So Dr. Nika will give an overview of the course and we'll move to question and answer. Please, we encourage you to ask your questions. That's why we are here today. You can use the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen to ask or you can use the raise your hand function if you would like to speak to ask your questions. Um, thank you again for joining us. Over to you, Dr. Nico. Brilliant. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Um, I think this is going to be a relatively small session, so please feel free to interrupt me with questions uh, if you have any along the way. But welcome. I'm uh, the director of this program. And I, I created this program um, many years ago. Uh, this is my baby. I run this program and I'm very excited uh, about it. It's going really well. Uh, it's one of, in my opinion, one of the best uh, real estate programs uh, in the world. Um, I uh, graduated uh, from Cambridge University. That's where I, where I did my PhD. I'm also the director of the Real Estate Institute here at, at UCL. Um, on top of this, I'm an academic visitor to the Bank of England, and I'm also a research affiliate at the University uh, U University College London Center for Finance. So my research spans real estate, but it's also applicable to the stuff that is, is being done by the Bank of England. And it's, it's also connected to financial stability issues that the Center of Finance uh, looks at. The, Bartlett, which is the faculty where the program is based, is consistently ranked as one of the top build environment schools in the world. So this is an amazing environment to be studying real estate in. I, I think, you know, having, having been at uh, other universities and studying real estate at many different places, I can tell you that the Bartlett is really unique uh, when it comes to what it can offer and the environment uh, that is so focused on studying the stuff that we build, how we build it, why we build it, and what purpose it serves. It's a really diverse and inclusive environment. So you have people from, from architecture, you can you have people from um, the uh, Department of uh, Advanced Spatial, Spatial Analysis, um, you have uh, people from the Bartlett School of Sustainable Construction, which I will tell you more about in a minute. But it's a, a, an environment that really is passionate about the built environment, about the, the environment that humans create, how we live in that environment, how we take advantage of it and how we interact with it. And it's also a place where people care about research and learning and not just the type of research that you know you would normally traditionally have at the business school and normally traditionally have at an architecture department, but at the bar that we try to connect these things and try to make sure that the curriculum that we offer you is something truly unique and gives you an understanding of um, the built environment as a whole rather than uh, one specific part of it. I mentioned the School of Sustainable Construction, which is the department where uh, the program is based, and that uh, department brings together experts from management, from construction, from engineering, and of course from economics and investment. It focuses on construction and management of build assets. And of course, real estate is a build asset, and this is how at the Institute and on the program we choose to look at it. Recently, the department started focusing more on climate change economics, and this is something that uh, at the department's uh, Real Estate Institute, we really believe in. Uh, I uh, studied the impact of sustainability on real estate for a very long time. Uh, my PhD was focused on that uh, topic specifically. But we we see sustainability as an integral part of real estate. And the department looks at sustainability as an integral part of the built environment. Uh, connecting experts from many different fields, we think that sustainability is really something that the built environment is going to be uh, driving forward and something that is going to affect the, the built environment um, significantly in the future. 
So the team of people that is uh, teaching on this program is called the Real Estate Institute. This is basically, um, I think, five academics at the moment, some of the best real estate researchers in the world, some of the best real estate academics in the world. Uh, we have people coming from the profession. We have people coming from uh, the academic side of things. It's a relatively new unit at the Barthet. It's, it's founded to bridge the gap between academia and practice. So I'm the director of that institute, and I really believe that the institute has three missions. One is to do research in real estate. Two is to um, provide excellent education in real estate. And three is to foster the debate, the debate in real estate between the profession and academia, but also the debate about where things are going, what are the new most important things uh, in the market. So we are interested in developing, operating and financing of buildings as well as land. The institute is growing. Uh, uh, we are uh, recruiting PhD students. We are recruiting new staff. And it's, it's uh, a really exciting place. Uh, and I really enjoy the vibe of excitement about when the institute is going, how it's growing and what it's doing. And you can really feel it when you interact with members of uh, the institute. So at this point, you may be wondering, why should you study real estate investment? Well, the, the simplest answer to this is, if you're studying investment, any type of investment, you should probably study real estate because it's the largest asset class out there. So market capitalization of real estate is larger than stocks or bonds, not to mention any other asset classes. So real estate is really important if you think about investment, whether it's households, or whether it's institutional investment or, or whether it's professional investors, real estate is the biggest asset class in the world. It's attracting a growing interest from investors around the world. So it, it turns out that now that we are learning more about what is the right way to invest, real estate is becoming an asset class that starts to receive a lot more attention than it historically did, because now we know a lot more about this. But also real estate is, has a global investment market, but local real estate market. So it's a really interesting field where you have a, a connection between local conditions that determine investment performance, but global investment markets that are looking for um, a, a good home. So in this way, real estate is slightly different than all other asset classes but it's the right time to start looking at real estate investment. Now, another thing that you should remember is that real estate is a lot more traditional than any other type of investment, but it's ready for a change. There is more data, there is more uh, knowledge out there. We start to understand these markets better. We start to understand how these markets work and relate to other markets uh, better. And this is something that drives those markets forward. The markets are changing, and that means that they're not only big markets, but also markets that are dynamically changing. So trying to understand where they're going is very important if you try to understand uh, investment in general. But then you may be thinking, okay, well, this is, this is a combination of, economic, of economics and investment analysis. And this may be, may sound like a, a, a strange combination or an unusual combination, but we put a lot of thought into making sure that this program is actually something that delivers the right types of skills that are in very high demand in the market. So essentially what we think we are able to deliver that nobody else can offer you is we're going to be able to tell you how to understand the market using frameworks from economics, and then use those frameworks in combination with data and sound analysis to make informed investment decisions. These are skills that we know from employers and from market leaders are in very high demand in the market, but we also believe that these are the skills that will help people make the market more modern, more efficient, and better for everybody. So we really believe that teaching people how to 
make better investment decisions, more efficient investment decisions is going to make the world a better place. And this is how we think, um, how important we think economics and investment in real estate is, but making sure that those decisions are made by people who know what they're doing is incredibly important. At the Bartlett School of Sustainable Construction, we do a lot of real estate research and that research drives our teaching. So essentially what we do is we, we try to understand what the industry needs and then we try to satisfy that demand with the research that we do at the Institute. Now that research informs our, our teaching so that we can teach you the best way of solving real problems, the latest, the, the cutting edge of uh, academic thinking and the cutting edge solutions to uh, burning industry problems. So there are maybe five areas of research that we focus on. So we, we look at real estate finance and investment, and this can be commercial real estate, but also banking and asset pricing in general. We do real estate economics, and that includes urban economics as well as housing or environmental economics. So there is a, a part of environmental economics that is very closely related to uh, real estate. And this is uh, something that we, we have uh, at the department. And we also look at this uh, at the Institute. We have asset management. So we, we look at how to make sure that when you operate an asset, you get the most out of it. And especially, you know, when you think about assets that are incredibly hard to operate, say um, healthcare assets or, or education assets, these are very large complex projects and making sure that you get the most out of them is very hard. And finally, we look at construction and development that includes real estate development as, as something that is very closely related to, to real estate and something that is driving uh, markets, markets forward. That research um, has been recognized by um, mainstream media. So you know, it, is, it has been covered in the Financial Times, The Economist, the Harvard Business Review. But essentially what I'm trying to say is this is research that is really something new, something that is at the cutting edge of what's available. This UCL is, is one of the best uh, universities for built environment in the world. And our research matches, matches that uh, claim. We think that the way we do research is very important. We spend a lot of time thinking about how we can contribute to, to making the world a, a better place. And that is recognized by people in the industry, by mainstream media, and by uh, our students who then go on into the market and face uh, very high demand for their skills. Now, of course, at this point, you may be thinking, why study RIA at the Bartlett School of Sustainable Construction? Well, as I said, it's a world-class university in itself, not just for the built environment. It's a world-class university, one of the super elite universities. And that means that everything we do, we try to do the best we can most important things that we can offer you is an environment when everybody cares about learning, everybody cares about learning outcomes, and everybody really cares about the future, really wants to um, make the most up, out, of, um, out of the time they have at UCL. And that also applies to, to built environment. So the Bartlett uh, is the faculty of the built environment, and we really think that making built environment better is our mission. We really believe that this is something that we want to spend a lot of time on and we want to invest heavily into um, both in terms of, of our financial resources, but also of our time. Now, the Bartlett School of Sustainable Construction is a unique place to study real estate because it will give you an overlap of traditional real estate and traditional economics with construction management and asset management, which increasingly are absolutely critical to making sure that you get the most out of real estate investment. And it's also the first real estate program to focus specifically on analytical skills. We teach you analytical skills that nobody else in the world will teach you. We developed modules that we are absolutely sure are something that only we can do because it's based on the research that we invented. It's based on the, the knowledge that we've created. 
Also, we are moving to an excellent new facility. So there's a, a, a UCL East campus. It's brand new. Uh, we take the executive uh, approach to teaching. So we really try to focus on uh, a practical approach to studying. We, we give you case studies. We have guest speakers. We show you practical examples. Although our research, our teaching is research driven, it is also very heavily based on a practical application. So we, we get the best of the two worlds. In terms of what you actually will be doing, we have six compulsory modules, and then you will be able to choose two optional ones. The compulsory ones are real estate and urban economics, financial economics of real estate, real estate data analysis, and analytical property valuation in the first term. Now, of course, the real estate and urban economics module is going to be the module in which you will get the understanding of economic theories and economic frameworks. Financial economics is going to give you the basic understanding of how the principle of financial economics can be applied to real estate. In the real estate data analysis module, you will learn the basic concepts of how to collect, process, manage, and analyze data specifically for real estate. So it's going to be real estate type data. And then in analytical property valuation, you will combine the knowledge from those three modules and apply it to estimating values and prices of buildings. And then in the second term, you will look at property investment analysis. So you will study investment, but you will also look at real asset management. That is a module that will tell you, you know, in practice, how do you make sure that you operate an asset the right way, but also that you derive the most value you can from a portfolio of assets. We are launching a new module next year, which is going to be focused on spatial data analysis, again, with application to real estate. And this is something that we are working on at the moment because it turns out that students really like working with data and uh, spatial data analysis lets you work with maps, which of course in real estate is something everybody likes to, to see. So one of the questions that I get very often is, who are we looking for? The first and most important quality we are looking in, for in every application is passion for real estate. If you think that this is really something you want to do, if you think that real estate is what you want to do for the foreseeable future when, and you really want to learn more about this, tell me, tell me in your personal statement that this is the case and why. Give me examples, give me uh, evidence of this. This is the number one priority uh, for me when I'm looking at applications. But you know there are also some technical requirements and prerequisites uh, that we have on this program. You need to be comfortable with numbers and basic statistics. Because the program is so heavily based on analytics and so heavily based on data analysis, uh, we do require the students who apply for this program to be comfortable with numbers and, and basic statistics. Uh, if you have done some data analysis in the past, that's even better, but that's not strictly required. And finally, you need to be interested in economics and investment. So you need to be passionate about real estate, you need to be comfortable with numbers, and you need to show me that you're interested in economics and investment. It can be uh, demonstrated for your uh, previous degree, but it can also be demonstrated in some other way. You can show me that you're comfortable with numbers and, and statistics by doing an online course in data analysis. If, if you can show me that you can do that, I would, I would be convinced that this is something, if you do it out of your own will, I would be convinced that this is something that you really care about and that this is something that really interests you. So that's all um, I wanted to, to tell you today. If you do want to download the slides for some reason, you can scan that QR code that you can see on your screen and download the slides and flick through them in your own time. But also, you can ask me questions now. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and see if there are any questions and answer them if there are any. Thank you, Dr. Niku, for that overview. It was insightful. Thank you very much. So now we'll be taking questions. Please remember you can ask your questions using the Q&A function 
or you can use the raise your hand function if you would like to speak to ask your questions. So Dr. Nico, we have some pre-asked questions that students are usually interested in. Um, one is how do you assess the course? Um, um, assignment, assessment, and um, focus studies or dissertation? Well, so we, we have a dissertation, uh, but that comes at the end. In general, we have super diversified assessment. I think we have one exam, but everything else is diversified away from exams. So we have coursework, we have presentations, we have projects, um, we have group work, we have individual work. Uh, it's it's uh, assessment that is supposed to be matching the type of skill that we want to assess, but also the type of, of the problem that that skill is trying to address. So, as I said, it's very diversified. And I think that the different types of assessment is we have an exam, we have uh, coursework, we have a project, we have presentations, and then we have group work. So at least five different types of assessment across the different modules. All right, thank you for that. Um, so another one is what are the class sizes like? Um, are the classes big or small? Yeah. So at the moment we have 40, this year we have 40, and we're going to aim for a similar uh, class size next year. It may change slightly up or down, depending on what happens with our new campus and how big our classrooms are. Um, but in general, we are aiming for 40, uh, and hopefully we can hit that target relatively closely. In general, we are hugely oversubscribed, so it's always going to be about picking the right people, but I try to make enough offers to get 40 students and then uh, see what happens if uh, there's anybody that uh, can really impress me with their application. I might be willing to stretch it to 42 or 43. All right, thank you for that. So another question that we have here that um, students really want to know is, so for this course, what careers have previous students come from and what careers can they venture into? Of course, so the background is super diverse. Last year we had a qualified neurologist. So it, it, I've been teaching real estate for a very long time. It, it was the first time I taught a qualified doctor. Um, but we have people from uh, different backgrounds. We have uh, historians, uh, we have architects, we have engineers. We have economists, we have people who did finance for the first degree. We have people with professional experience. Some of them have a lot of it. So we have people like five or seven years of, of professional experience. Um, and we have people that have just finished their first degrees. So it, it, it varies quite significantly. Uh, the backgrounds are very different. And in terms of what careers they, they move on to have, um, again, huge uh, diversity. Some of them end up uh, in straight up finance in major investment banks. Some of them go into consultancy. Some of uh, them go into um, banking in general, so lending banks. Uh, many of them will become uh, real estate specialists and work uh, in different parts of the real estate profession. Some of them, um, I think last year, uh, went into public government, uh, sorry, public service and government. Um, and this year, I think we have a couple of students working part time and they work for private equity funds uh, in London. So a broad range. Uh, but the, the point I'm trying to make is we're not going to tie you to any specific profession because real estate is so general that you can do anything you want when you graduate. Now, of course, this is an economics and investment program. And that means that our students tend to gravitate towards uh, finance. And those who choose to, to focus on finance do really well. Uh, but there are options around that. So you don't have to go into finance. You don't have to go into consulting. You don't really have to end up in, in real estate at all. We, we have students that ended up uh, doing PhDs in civil engineering or, or construction. We have students that uh, ended up in, in research jobs unrelated to real estate uh, uh, completely. So again, there is uh, a large spectrum, but most of our students end up going into uh, finance and investment type jobs. 
All right, thank you for that, Dr. Nico. We have a question from William. Um, I see that the course offers two optional modules at the School of Sustainable Construction. Is this arrangement reciprocated the other way around? As in, if one were to take um, the course MSc Construction, Economics and Management, could we do two optional modules from this course? No. So the reason for this is we want to make sure that our class sizes are relatively small on this program. And there's, you, honestly, at the moment, we just don't have any empty seats in, in our rooms. So we're not allowing any students that aren't on this program uh, uh, to join, although we do get requests all the time. But uh, the, the uh, modules that we teach um, on RIA are exclusive to RIA students. Uh, and we're not even thinking of, of opening this up to um, others because we are really focused on working with small groups and in a very specific setting that relies on the interaction between the, the tutor and the students. All right, thank you for answering. Um, remember, if you have any questions, that's why we are here, feel free to pop them in the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen, or you can raise your hand. So I have one question here, Dr. Niku. Um, during the um, course of this program, uh, would it be possible to meet industry professionals? Is there an opportunity for that? Yes. So the first five weeks of the program are essentially the basics, and this is where you interact with academics only. And then we start bringing in guest speakers. Um, so in the first term, you'd meet at least five. Um, last week, we had somebody who's a CEO of a tech startup. This week, we're going to have somebody who's a head of research for a major pension fund. Next week, we're going to have somebody from an international sovereign wealth fund. And this is just the first term. In the second term, there's also going to be guest speakers on pretty much every module. Now, the way we try to work with our guest speakers is they will tell you the practical side of things, but they will also be slotted into our curriculum. So there's going to be a theoretical part of what we're going to teach you. There's going to be a, a practical part of what we're going to teach you. And this is where the guest speakers are coming in. And then there's going to be applied part where we merge the two together. And then we show you how to apply this in practice. After you have an opportunity to interact with, uh, uh, to, to, uh, hear from the guest speakers, there's usually an opportunity to interact with them. Um, sometimes we, we take them to lunch, sometimes they just stay around um, uh, our lecture halls and, and chat to the students. I know that one of our students is, is uh, having a follow-up interview with uh, our guest speaker from last week um, and hopefully uh, he can do well and uh, get a job with, with uh, the company that the, the speaker is representing. But uh, this is the type of interaction that you can expect with, with guest speakers. All right, thank you very much for that. Um, please send in your questions. Um, so this might be our last question if we don't have any more sent in. So um, what makes this course unique in terms of what transferable skills can students hope to get um, when they join in this course? Okay, well, there are two different questions here. So one is what makes this, this program unique, and the other one is about the unique transferable skills. So there are many things that make this program unique, and I know every way in which this program is unique. Uh, I think the one that I'm the most proud of is the fact that we have decided to drive the industry forward. And we are on purpose not affiliated with um, any industry organizations that would hold us back. We are affiliated with some, but not the ones that are seen as traditional and backwards. Um, this is a strategic move by um, our leadership team. We really try to drive things forward. We really try to change the profession and we have the courage and the flexibility to do that. Not every program out there is, is willing to take that risk. We are, um, we worked with the profession, with senior industry leaders to try to develop something that is truly unique and gives you an overview of what things should be like rather than what things used to be. So, but that's just one way uh, in which we are unique. 
And this is something that I'm very passionate about. But in terms of the uh, transferable skills, I would say it's um, the ability to analyze data and make informed investment decisions based on data. Now, I'm not saying nobody else is teaching you how to make informed investment decisions. I'm not saying nobody else is teaching you how to use data. Combining the two is incredibly hard and very rare. What makes this program unique is that we will teach you how to analyze real estate data specifically, and then <clears throat> we will teach you how to make good investment decisions that are driven by data. And this is something that makes this program different than anything else uh, that is, is out there in the market. Thank you very much, Dr. Nico. Um, I have put the link to the prospectus in the chat function. So if you need more information about the course, you can always refer to that. So we have come to the end of the open day. Thank you everyone for joining us. We hope it was informative. We hope it was insightful for you. Dr. Nico, do you have any parting words? Well, thank you for attending and I'm looking forward to seeing your application. Thank you again for joining us. Have a lovely rest of your day.